Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I am a third year urology resident um, and this is my YouTube channel. I make videos about medical school, about life and residency, kind of about my life as a resident. Um, today I'm going to be making a video about how to be useful in the OR as a third year medical student. We have brand new third year medical students coming through and I think a lot of programs are starting to have third year medical students coming through and I just wanted to talk about how these students can be helpful in the OR environment because they've never been in the OR environment. So I hope you enjoy this video. If you do, please don't forget to subscribe. Let's jump in. So the first thing as a third year medical student at least in my program, what we do is we send out where you're supposed to be the week before. Um, obviously this is subject to change, so just check the day before, but knowing what OR you're supposed to be in and kind of the medical background of your patients. This is less to be useful, but just something that I really think you should do as a third year medical student. If you are fresh in the OR, we do not expect you to know every step of the surgery. We don't expect you to be amazing at suturing. You're here to learn, but knowing the background of your patient and like maybe how that might be relevant to their surgery. Like if they're on AFib, if they're on blood thinners, like, you know, knowing, oh, do they need to stop their blood thinners for this surgery? Um, if they've had prior abdominal surgeries, like say your patient's having an abdominal surgery, if they've had prior abdominal surgeries, that may make the surgery harder. Um, if they're missing certain things, like say you've had an appendectomy, sometimes we use the appendix in certain surgeries as like a landmark. Oh, they don't have an appendix. So just knowing their background medical history, and then if you can like make that one deduction further of how this may be useful, um, I think is really a good thing just to do as a third year medical student. And then if they ask you any questions, you're prepared for that. It's always good to know who your patient is. Next is helping the patient get to the OR. So usually as a medical student, you know, the resident will be writing notes between cases, putting in orders. And as a medical student, you don't really have much to do. So obviously we want you to get a snack, go to the bathroom, get some water, do whatever you need to do between cases. But then if you can, helping to anesthesia to transport the patient to the operating room from pre-op and getting the patient onto the bed and in the right position um, is very helpful for the resident if they're kind of rushing around seeing consults or something just to keep an eye out for the patient, let the resident know when they're going back and kind of helping with positioning, um, especially because you often do need an extra set of hands. So it's really useful to have someone extra there. For urology, we do a lot with the patients in lithotomy, which means their legs are up in stirrups. So whenever I have a new medical student, I always show them you know, where the stirrups are, how to put the stirrups on the bed, how to take the foot of the bed off, how to secure the patient's legs. And being proactive about doing these things, it may seem simple, but as a resident, having to ask someone to help you to do something with every single step is really exhausting. And like I said, we do this in a lot of our surgeries. So as soon as you've seen a couple, we want you to kind of get in there. Like if you see us starting to put a stirrup on the bed, grab the other stirrup, put that stirrup on the bed, help get the legs up because you want to do them kind of at the same time. Um, helping to put the SCDs on and plug them in. Um, things that the residents do to help like speed things along in the OR, we also want you to do just because like I said, two hands is always better, especially when positioning patients, putting them in stirrups, moving them down in the bed, all of that is really helpful. Before the surgery starts, if you are scrubbing in, it's very helpful if you grab your own gloves, but maybe also if you know the resident and you've worked with them before and know their glove size, grabbing their gloves is really useful. And it's also just like, something that makes you look good. It's a really good step. Um, it's always like the resident always is like, wow, that was really thoughtful, thank you. Um, usually the OR attendants have the attendings or the scrub nurses have the attendings gloves, um, but opening gloves for the resident is always really helpful. And again, just like makes you look good. After we've moved the patient over to the bed, as we are preparing them for an open case, um, we usually will shave the area that we are operating on. And as a medical student, it's very helpful if you take some tape and just pat with the sticky side of the tape to pick up the hair. Again, something that seems really basic, but something that you don't, wouldn't automatically think about and something that is just so extra, have an extra, it's so helpful to have an extra set of hands do and just something that like, we don't wanna ask for, you know, just like to do it automatically, it just makes you look really good. During a surgery, depending on what type of surgery it is, most of what you'll be doing if it's an open case is retracting and using the suction to help suction up blood or smoke. Um, so 
during an open case retracting very useful um you just have to the re the attending or resident will put the retractor and put you where they want you so don't worry about like moving it around or anything they'll put you there and you just hold there and try not to move which sounds really basic it's hard i also have issues with it it's like hard um and then things inevitably slip but just being able to stay there um, and not move is really helpful. And in terms of suctioning, you wanna suction blood, um, but sometimes you also wanna suction smoke because if you're cauterizing through tissue, especially if it's a lot of tissue or you're cauterizing a lot of bleeding, it creates a lot of smoke. So suctioning smoke is really helpful. It helps protect your lungs, but also the attending and the resident's lungs. Um, and we really do rely on medical students to help us with that. The key to doing that is not to stick the suction right in the line of vision where someone's working. So say someone's dissecting something, you wanna get close so you can get the smoke before it goes everywhere, but you don't wanna block the field of vision, which I've had that issue a couple times. So just be cognizant of that. Um, obviously, you know we know people are brand new, so we don't expect people to be experts at the beginning, but just keeping an eye out for those certain things is really helpful. Um, so yeah, keeping the suction ready, being ready with that, being able to retract, very, very useful things. The other thing operatively that you might do as a medical student is follow, which is a way of holding some tension, back tension on a suture while someone is suturing um, to help either like show some tissue or keep the suture out of the way. So what that entails is using two fingers to hold the back tension on the suture, but you obviously want enough slack on the, on the front part of the suture so that the surgeon can keep sewing. So you wanna hold some back tension on the part that's already been sutured, but you wanna keep enough slack on the part moving forward that the, the surgeon can continue to sew. It's kind of hard to explain. Um, if you're interested, try watching some videos or they'll show it to you the first time you do it, but just something else that you might be asked to do. Oh, and cut sutures. So the tip to cutting sutures is you're not gonna hold your scissors flat. I don't know if you can see, you're not gonna hold them flat. You want to angle them because that helps you get a better edge on the suture so you can cut it more cleanly and so it won't slip off. So always go in and turn your scissors to cut. And then you can always ask if you don't know how long the resident or the attending wants their suture because some sutures you want to be longer. Um, unbraided sutures are more likely to slip. So you want those to be longer versus braided sutures you can cut a little shorter. Um, so knowing how to do that and the key is turning the scissors when you cut, um, very useful. And then we will often ask the medical students to help close. So what I always recommend is either if you can, if you have access to things to help tie, like suture, usually we'll have, for medical students, we'll have them instrument tie. Just practicing that basic movement, because it's not intuitive, you kind of have to practice. And then knowing kind of the different types of like, like stitches that you can do. Um, usually for laparoscopic sites or robotic sites, the small, we'll usually have you guys do the smaller ones. And so it is a deep dermal is what we do in my program, which is deep to superficial. And then on the other side, superficial to deep, you want the tails on both sides and then instrument tie that down. Look up some videos. If you know you're gonna be in a robotic case or a laparoscopic case and you think you might be asked to close, look up some videos. And just maybe if you can, if you have an instrument laying around, practice instrument tying. Because we know that you guys have a lot of access to practice hand tying, but we usually don't ask the medical students to do that as often. We actually usually ask them to instrument tie, which is like kind of out of the, you know, not something you've really practiced. So just being a little comfortable with that will obviously show you how to do things, but um, it also helps speed things along because there's like the classic medical student trope of, oh, it takes so long for them to close. Um, so knowing kind of those basic things is very useful. In terms of asking questions in the OR, we love it when medical students ask questions. It shows an interest, especially if you've done a little bit of reading and you ask kind of like the next step of question, it's great. We love it. We love to talk about our profession and we love to answer your questions. The only thing we ask is to read the room. If you notice that there's maybe a lot of blood spurting for something or everyone has gotten really quiet and like the air seems tense, don't ask a question. Just you know, if you're suctioning, keep suctioning. If you're holding traction, keep holding that. And if you are uh, just not doing anything, just stay quiet because when things are really stressful and a medical student asks a question, it's 
you don't want to be rude, but you're like, please just give us a sec. Um, so just read the room. Um, I feel like that's the case in any situation, but especially in the OR when things can get tense really quickly, it's important to recognize that. For urology specifically, we have a lot of cysto cases and robotic cases, which is basically like cases where a lot of the times you're gonna be watching a screen. You're not gonna be scrubbed into all of these cases. Sometimes you will, you know, help hold wires and stuff, but a lot of times you'll just be watching a screen. And as a medical student, I think it's important. I know these can be boring and I know you're exhausted, but just paying attention. You can look at your phone every once in a while, but don't be like deep into TikTok on your phone. Don't be like reading articles. This sounds like basic stuff, but you would be surprised. Like this is all stuff that has happened. Don't fall asleep. Um, just don't sit where you can't see the screen. Like be interested, be alert. And if you have a question, ask it because, except for if it's a tense moment, but it's always good to know that you're engaged and that always looks good. So once the surgery is said and done, um, really, really useful things is to help transport the patient back to the bed or the stretcher when they're waking up, something we just always need extra hands with. Um, Cause the attending is usually gone at that point. Maybe the chief is gone if it's a big open case. So it's just you and like a junior resident and it's always really helpful. The nurse is charting, like it's really helpful to just help move. So that's just something to stick around for and just be ready for. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed these tips. Um, if you do, please don't forget to subscribe. If you are a resident and or a fourth year medical student and you have any tips, please leave them below. I think it's just good to see what else people find helpful. Um, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.